My, my name's Mark Wenatong. I'm the Senior Medical Officer at Cape York Health Council, which is an Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation in Cape York. Um, but at the same time, I was the, the um, President of the Indigenous Doctors Association um, in Australia, and, um, and I do research and stuff as well, and a fair bit of policy work in health. On the day of the apology, um, I was actually running a clinic at an Aboriginal medical service in Mount Isa, um, and we'd organised that morning for a breakfast um, for people to get together. And in actual fact, I think um, I don't think any of us realised how significant it was going to be. This particular breakfast, there were there was another Aboriginal doctor, so she and I both said because our mothers had just died in the previous month, gee, it would be fantastic for them to see something like this. I was genuinely surprised by the, um, the genuineness of the apology. Um, something that's really different for Australia, I think. Um, from my perspective, um, there's probably three or four levels that the apologies made a difference. And the, the major one for me was social and emotional well-being of Indigenous people in Australia. Things like the NT intervention and um, the um, domestic violence and the family violence stuff that was happening in Central Australia. and. Um, and that being seen as part of Aboriginal culture and uh, Aboriginal people feeling bad about themselves, basically, particularly men. So I think in that sense, it's made a, it's made a really big difference. Um, the other levels, though, have been um, really clear around policy, um, particularly from uh, non-government organisations and an Aboriginal community's perspective, the way that we deal with other stakeholders now has changed. A lot of the the other partner organisations um, that we dealt with um, didn't have that much respect for Aboriginal people or issues or organisations. And that actually changed. It was a subtle change, um, but you actually noticed almost overnight that there was, a, there was a swing in that and you had a bit, of a, a bit more control. I think it'd be great if we really could um, work on the whole Close the Gap um, campaign more strongly. I still think we really need high level um, engagement and high level legislated um, um, relationships with the Australian government. So, and I mean, maybe not a treaty, but something that's similar to that, where um, we're not at the whims of politics every time a new party comes in for this kind of thing to happen. If you have something locked in at a higher level, they can't do that. And um, kids are safer for you know the rest of their lives. They've actually got something to live for rather than just surviving. And I think that's the that's the big deal for me. So I think the high-level agreement's the most important thing, and um, and a lot of the other things will follow from that if we get it right.